and welcome to another episode of FUBAR. In today's episode, I want to talk about Lambda Response Payload Streaming. This is a feature that Lambda added this year. I didn't talk about it on time, sorry about that. But it's very interesting because it opens the door to a lot of different applications. So I want to cover it now. And this video will be about what is this feature about, when to use it, and a demo as always. So let's get started. So let's start talking about how Lambda works without the response streaming and how it sends the responses. So the client will make a response to Lambda, then will grab the request, do whatever it needs to do, process that request and generate a response and send it to the client when the response is ready. This process takes some time. It can take from one millisecond to 15 minutes, and that will increase the latency for the client. So if the client is waiting for 15 minutes, yay, that's great experience. But sometimes even a small latency of few seconds can be quite annoying already for the client, depending on who is your client. This latency in web applications it's called or refer as time to first byte. So this measures the duration between the client initiating the request and getting the response back. So it's a simple measure. And this is very useful when we want to load a page, for example, in a browser. And the moment we hit that URL from the time we get a page that is something on it. And in order to decrease the time to first byte, Lambda now has this response streaming feature. Let's see how the previous example works now with the feature enable. So we have again the client making a request to Lambda and then Lambda will start sending partial responses back to the client. As soon as it has a bit, it will just send it back until the full response is created. And then this is all achieved by Lambda generating the response and buffering it out as it has a little bit of piece of that response. Here now with the latency that is perceived by the user, it's quite small because the user is getting input all the time that keeps them engaged and they don't realize that the function is taking so long. So imagine that you have a function that is processing a big image or something like that. So you can start seeing the image coming down as a buffer and filling your screen as it gets processed. So it's better than just to see a white screen until the image is fully loaded. So response streaming solves two major problems. The first one is one we discussed that is that shorten the time to the first byte that I mentioned the idea is to decrease the latency. The second problem that I have not talked about, but it's an interesting one, is that increases the payload that Lambda supports. By default, Lambda supports a six megabyte payload. So whenever you are using, I don't know, API gateway or the traditional function, like even with functions URLs or application load balancer, whatever the function can respond return in the response has to be six megabytes. Now with the response streaming, you can have up to 20 megabytes. So you can return bigger objects, but you return them in a longer period of time. Now you might be wondering what are good use cases for this new functionality. The first one that might come to your mind is generative AI. And I have a demo on that. If you're interested, just let me know. I can make a video on that. But if you have been using services like ChatGTP or Bedrock, you have noticed that these services return the response streaming. So they will write one word at a time and you will be able to read as the model is returning the information. So now you can create a solution that returns the answer from a Bedrock, for example, location into a client using this same mechanism. And it's quite straightforward. Just let me know if you want to see that. Another example is when you want to do uh, server side rendering. That's something that we have been fighting for many years. For example, if you use Next.js, sometimes you need to create these pages dynamically. You might not be able to have them in CloudFront and you want to create them using a Lambda function. 
So now with the response streaming, basically you can start getting first bits of your page loaded into your client. And as time goes by, you can feel more and more that application. So you can do server-side rendering better. Another use case, if you need to return larger payload. So imagine that you are generating an image or you are generating a PDF with customer information, or you are doing some real-time audio or video stitching, like adding an ad or something like that. Now you can return it in the response of the function. What we tend to do in the past is that we generate it in the function, we store it in S3, and then we get it from S3 from our client. That's okay, but that removes one step. If you can do it, then simpler is nicer. So now you understand what it is, when to use it and why it's so cool. Great. Now you want to use it in your next application. So how you get started with this? There are some limitations to use response streaming. Basically, the first one is that the natively Lambda only supports it right now in Node.js. So if you have an application that is not using Node.js, then you might need to use a custom runtime. If you use custom runtime and you implement the, this feature, then you will be able to access it in any kind of runtime, but that's something you might need to implement yourself. Also, if you're using Lambda Web Adapter, it comes out of the box, so you will be able to use response streaming. If you don't know what Lambda Web Adapter is, I'll leave you a video link in the description so you can learn what it is, but it's already an extension that supports response streaming, so that's pretty nice. You can also use it from the AWS CDK in some particular versions, and you can invoke it from the Lambda API by using the API invoke response streams, and that's uh, how you will be able to use this function. Or then you can use functions or else. I will show you a demo how you can use it and to invoke your functions from outside AWS. You might be thinking, can I use API Gateway or Application Load Balancer? And no, they don't have supports for response streaming, so you cannot use it. But Lambda Functions URL, yes, they do. So let's go now to the code and see how we can use them in with Lambda Functions URL and also what kind of things we need to do. I will show you an example using Node.js. So this is a native implementation on Lambda. So let's look at the template YAML. This is using some. We have the function and you can see that this function is a typical function, nothing special using node 16, timeout 30 seconds, this memory size, nothing weird. Then we have the function URL. This is the function URL. If you don't know what functions URLs are, I have a video on that. And it uses the, it targets the function that we just created. It has some kind of authentication. And then it uses this invoke model response stream. So the response stream is something you need to have on, you need to enable if you want to use the functions URL with the response stream. So this is something important. Then we have our function. And no, this is super simple function. I don't want to get into coding here, but I want to show you a couple of things that are important in this function. The first thing you can see here is that we have this AWS Lambda Stringify response. So this is a little different from what we will see in a normal Lambda function. So here we are wrapping our function and we are telling the runtime that we are going to stream the responses. So this is something you need to wrap your function around and this decorator then will send the response to the right place. Then this decorator also enables us to have a more interesting input. So we can see the event and the context. That's something we have been having in our handler method always with Lambda, but now we have a new thing called response stream. And the response streams is something that will allow you to write data too. So here is where we want to write our responses. Then here we have a very simple application that will buffer some things because I'm recording this on Halloween <laughs> and then uh, writing them to the response stream. You can use in Node.js the write into the buffer method or it's recommended for AWS Lambda response streams to use the pipeline method. These are implemented in 
in Node.js, so you can just basically check the documentation, but basically you pass the stream, the request and the response that is writing to, and boom, you're writing into the console. So let's see this in action. Let me invoke my function. I will invoke the function and you will see that it will load pumpkins and it will load them in this kind of array. So you can see how they load and how many they are and how they were coming. So this is how the response streaming works. We can make a bigger array. We could return more pumpkins. We can make something more complicated. If you want to see more complex demos and examples, I recommend you to go to the blog post that Julian Good wrote when this was announced. Here there is really good examples and explanations on how to use the response streaming. So you can see how you can write to the response stream using the, the dot write into the response stream, how to use it with the pipeline, how to read the stream response, how you can use it with the functions URL, such as I explained you, how you can use them from uh, other generic HTTP clients, how you can, I don't know, do so many things, how you can write larger payloads. So if you want to, I don't know, bring a PDF or something from somewhere else, how you can invoke a function from AWS SDK. There is so many examples on how to use the response streaming. So this is a must read if you want to implement it. So I will leave you the link in the description box. And that's the video for me today. It's a short video, but it's a feature I have not mentioned and I have been using it quite a lot with generative AI lately. So let me know if you want that video of Bedrock and the response streaming. That's something I have the demo already, but I have not made a video yet. So let me know if you want it, I can prepare it for you. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and let me know what kind of features you would like me to cover. Around here, you can find a playlist with all the announcements for this year, 2023. And in this video, you can learn more about the Lambda Web Adapter. Thank you for listening and I'll see you in another episode of UBA.